next presentation. Um, so the speaker is Glenn. And uh, Glenn really um, prefers to keep a fog of mystery around him, around his, around his person, because uh, he didn't share his biography uh, <laughs> with me. So I can't really tell you much about Glenn, uh, but I can you I can tell you a bit about his talk, and it's as you can see, it's about the communication protocols uh, for both, uh, so for the uh, communication system on board or asset, but also uh, the ground station part. So we have both space segment and the ground segment part. Meanwhile, uh, Glenn, are you able to um, to yes, use your I microphone and your uh, also your camera? Okay, great. Um... I'm trying to figure this out. Okay, um, I sincerely apologize. Um, I did send the bio, but uh, maybe some no problem. How I sent it. Um, I can just quickly say um, I'm okay. Hand over to you, yeah, Glenn. I, okay, I I'm, leave the stage to you. Am I on? Yeah, you have yeah. twelve minutes, and then we yeah. have like eight um, minutes for our questions. Right. Thanks. So I'm communications team lead for RSAT. Uh, this. Um, sort of follows the uh, four presentations or talks uh, yesterday. Um, essentially, what I'm talking about here is from the data link layer and below, <laughs> so mostly the hardware. Um, ORSAT uh, is a project that originally started with ORSAT 1 with the CubeSat launch initiative. And um, we um, came to the realization that we needed to get some flight heritage first. So we came up with ORSAT 0 and then subsequently ORSAT 0 0.5 to um, uh, test out some of the things before we go into the real ORSAT 1 um, flight. Um, what ORSAT 0 is primarily going to be doing is testing out communication channels and the um, power system and the battery and essentially the bus. And so um, of, of sincere or um, significant uh, uh, importance is the communication channels. So on the left, uh, we have um, how we're going to be presenting to the amateur radio community. We are using amateur licensing for ORSAT, so we need to um, give something to the world. And uh, we're intending to use SATNOGS uh, to schedule observations to pick up our APRS beacon, which contains our engineering data. Um, we were initially going to be putting on a CW um, component as well, but um, that's not on ORSAT 0. It'll probably follow subsequently. And then on the right side is our actual engineering data link. And we're basically um, providing a L-band receiver that is receiving all the time. It's dedicated to receiving. And so what that means is we actually have two transceivers uh, or two um, transceiver chips on the on the spacecraft. And one of them is dedicated to receiving on the L-band at all times. And uh, the other one is uh, primarily transmitting the beacon or the downlink uh, acknowledgement or responses to the uplink. Um, but uh, it could also um, be switched as a, a receiver as well. So there's a little bit of redundancy there. Um, so we, we go up on L, um, and the uh, reason for that is because we wanted to um, put into place an underutilized band. Uh, L is an uplink only in the space segment. And uh, we don't have bandwidth uh, or bit rate uh, restrictions. Um, we have a bandwidth restriction, but no bit rate restrictions on the actual channel. So we're moving as fast as the um, transceiver chip will allow um, at 120 kilobits per second. On the downlink, we are um, restricted uh, by uh, the um, IARU and the ITU um, regulations on 70 centimeter in the space segment. Um, and being an unspecified uh, protocol, um, which is a very odd thing to say, um, we're able to push up to as fast as um, 100 kilohertz of spectrum, or we chose 96 uh, kilobits per second um, as our downlink. Um, these are the uh, mission designators and the details of the emissions, uh, what we are expecting for our signal to noise ratio or EVNO. Um, basically, um, we're going to complete our link budget. I didn't include the link budget details here just because there's not enough time. Um, but the important thing to realize is that over here um, in our UHF beacon, we are using the uh, G3RUH um, APRS packet um, over X25 um, data link. Um, 
so that we can um, be picked up by nearly everybody in the world. And um, it's only when we go to the EDL um, links down here do we uh, go into the, the non-standard bit rates. Um, so the transceivers. Um, I realized that I forgot to um, include a slide here. However, um, it's probably not the only thing I forgot. Um, this is the block diagram of ORSAT. Um, and then the highlighted sections are ORSAT 0. So the um, highlighted sections are just the uh, critical subsystems. And uh, my focus is primarily on the antenna and on the C3 board, the command communications and control. And then here you can see the AX5043. There's two of them. Um, one of them is dedicated uh, for downlink on the L band. And then the other is um, actually up and down. So there's an, a low noise amplifier and a power amplifier. Um, and uh, so we can put that into either um, mode. Um, this is the uh, block diagram of the LNA. Um, of interest is that the X5043 can only go up to about a gigahertz, and so to pick up the L-band signal at 1.2 gigahertz, we had to put in a down converter, and so there's a lot of extra hardware here. However, it's been proven to be pretty reliable. We're using a synthesizer from uh, Silicon Labs uh, to do uh, the uh, local oscillator and a uh, mini circuits uh, mixer. Uh, the transmitter uh, basically has the second AX5043, a power amplifier that can put out plus 30 dBm, directional coupler so that we can measure forward and reflected power, and then uh, the low noise amplifier uh, for the receive channel, uh, and it's all basically uh, driven by this switch right here to switch the modes. Um, the antennas are basically your ordinary um, tape measure arrays. Uh, we're using a uh, quadrature fed uh, canted turnstile, and um, we're using mini circuits um, hybrid directional couplers uh, to feed those four elements in quadrature. Um, earlier uh, in the mechanical presentation done by Marvin and Hayden, they talked about the cards having a uh, insulated connection to the anodized frame. Well, this is an example of one of the cards um, that actually require a electrical connection because the actual um, space frame is part of the antenna system. Um, similarly, um, and that was the slide that I was hoping to, I forgot to do, was um, the uh, C3 board actually has um, and a, a physical electrical connection to this um, space frame so that we can uh, dissipate heat from the power amplifier. Um, in terms of the beacon, we're basically sending the um, ordinary uh, things that one would expect uh, for spacecraft health, spacecraft health. Um, and in particular, uh, for the radio stuff, we're sending down um, the uh, received signal indicator, phase lock loop uh, status, uh, temperature of the PA, forward and reflected power, and other um, RF uh, related things, um, in addition to many other pieces of, of uh, data uh, that's uh, relative re relevant to the uh, spacecraft. This is obviously published. Um, uh, IRU has um, the links to our um, pub directory that contains the details of our um, beacon format. And um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, so there. Um, how do we transition between beaconing and uh, the engineering data link? OK, so this is how we start up. Um, when we get uh, pushed out the back of the deployer, whether it be a P-Pod or the ISS, uh, we um, start a timer that uh, goes uh, at some period of time, uh, particularly uh, 45 minutes uh, for our current launch. And uh, we go through the steps of determining if we have power, if the temperatures are OK, if everything has actually um, been deployed, um, the antennas in particular, and then we drop down into this state uh, machine here in this loop um, where we basically go back and forth between listening um, on the EDL, the L-band uplink for a transition to the EDL mode, or do we just sit there and beacon? If the power is good and we haven't been told to go into EDL mode, we'll just sit there and beacon, and that allows us to um, be picked up by the amateur community. That is pretty much um, all the pieces on the um, uh, spacecraft. Now, in terms of uniclogs, this is our ground station system. A uh, quick block diagram of the things were based on the Lime SDR um, uh, transceiver. And um, we have basically all the front end uh, equipment there. Uh, we're talking with um, circular polarized Yagi antennas and a quad uh, helix antenna, um, power amplifiers, monolithic amplifiers and then antenna mounted LNAs. Um, down on the power and control, um, we are 
basically uh, running a power board that turns on and off all the components that from the above part, um, plus operating the controller. Um, this is our power board um, that operates all the little components. That's the actual station. Um, the UHF is on the left. We actually include a VHF antenna as well, so that the station can be used for other purposes. Um, the quad helix antennas for the uplink. And uh, this is all in on top of the roof of our engineering building. And down here in the bottom is the enclosure that contains all the components that were on that previous sheet, which basically is all squeezed into this box right here. It's pretty tight. Um, the uh, Station is controlled uh, by the, uh, there's two ROC 64s, one that's uh, running GNU radio for the uh, SDR, the other is uh, for running a state machine that we call a state daemon or a station control daemon. And uh, this is the state machine that's running station control. Um, and then the GNU radio flow graph, half of this, uh, well, the flow graph is all entirely uh, running headless on the second ROC 64 in on the ground station. <clears throat> and um, basically uh, from the Lime SDR to uh, UDP sockets. Um, this is the receive side where we can simultaneously receive both the beacon and the EDL. And then this is the transmit side where we're basically transmitting on the L band and we have the ability to re-enable this section up here to transmit on UHF if we're having trouble with receiving on L band. Um, and this is what uh, it basically looks like um, on a workstation. So the idea is that the entire station is remote mountable. It can be put anywhere. We're actually building um, two more. We've got uh, one just about completed at a second location in Portland. And then uh, we have one actually being built at, uh, at the University College of London uh, with future uh, intent to possibly build one in, um, in Hawaii. Um, so once these stations are deployed, uh, basically all you are doing is you're remote accessing into it. And uh, uh, on the uh, Workstation side, uh, you would either be um, you you would be running gpredict, even though that would be running on the uh, station enclosure itself. But that's where um, your uh, mission control stuff, such as late yams and uh, the um, other side of the GNU radio head, where you can actually render the um, SDR data. I think I have covered everything. Um, future plans is to get that uh, CW beacon um, back onto the uh, downlink. Uh, we have intent to go to DVS2 for mission stuff. Again, what I said was this was the um, primary critical subsystems that I described, uh, essentially what we refer to as the bus. Uh, in terms of mission stuff, we would possibly be doing either uh, DVS2 on the S-band or X-band, and uh, we're also doing a DX Wi-Fi experiment uh, on S-band. <coughs> we would like to integrate uh, into SATNOGS in a way that uh, we can actually deploy the transmitting uh, capabilities, um, although we're unsure on how we would uh, proceed with that. And um, we would be open to receiving QSL cards for those people who receive our beacon. Um, the uh, uh, call sign, uh, which we have, um, which I have it on my last slide here, uh, is uh, open or is available on QRZ, so people can find our information there. Uh, Orset Zero is launching on January 10th uh, of this coming year, um, or no sooner than January 10th. I apologize. And uh, that is a picture of Orsat in its uh, fully stowed mode, ready to be deployed. Um, and there are the links to um, things that point back to us. And I think I did it in the right amount of time. Glenn, thanks very much. That was also excellent timing. And uh, you managed to compress a lot of information into this 12 minutes. I think it will consume all my, my, my holidays now. <laughs> uh, to go through the, the GNU flow charts. But uh, amazing. So let's look in the chat. We have um, uh, Pieros. He is mentioning that uh, you should not forget to submit the beacon format to uh, Satnox. Uh, we will so do that. that Absolutely. Not decoding. Yes. We will have that done in the next week or so because uh, time is ticking for us. Yes. Right. So the launch is upcoming, right? Um, the beacon is actually on our pub site and we handed it to the IARU, so uh, we'll give you the link to that. And um, we've got uh, uh, Dimitri McGluckin, who's been working with some of uh, the people at uh, Libre uh, Space. Uh, so we'll make sure we get that there. Okay. Um, Patrick says hello. <laughs> uh, and then and there's a. Uh, uh, 
Risto, ah, yeah, our next talker here is asking uh, if there's a QSL card design. We're, we're That's... working on it. It's going to be some part of our ORSAT logo, and uh, it, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to put that together. That's going to happen before we uh, were launched. Um, in fact, uh, I think Risto's going to be the one that gets to do that. <laughs> Very good. Red is asking um, if there's full telemetry decoder for Polaris. Mm, not sure if this maybe there's some. I'm yeah. not sure. I'm yeah, sorry. I'm asking. Uh, sorry, Glenn. Now this is red. I'm asking because uh, I'm not. I'm not trying. I know what uh, beacon uh, uh, decoder is. Uh, if it's used to uh, and decode all the the telemetry that you have on Orosat. Uh, the reason I ask is because Polaris is a machine learning project that learns from the telemetry, and we could run it if you if you if you have this as a potential. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. I um, I just did a screenshot, so I'll have your uh, message there on a screenshot. Um, let's see. Uh, we would like to know um, the best um, approach to getting our beacon uh, format published so that people can decode it um, and um, it's on it should be on our um, website orsat.org um, and um, I will I'll reach out to whoever um, your best um, yeah, thanks, advice thanks. to be is to do that um, yeah thanks a lot yeah okay do, do we have more question in the chat uh... Don't see one. I have one uh, for the ground station. So it's mounted on the roof. Mm -hmm. um, is it? Uh, how about the maintenance? Uh, is it possible to flip it down? I didn't see that. Well, it's not very high. Um, so we take a small step ladder to reach it, um, and we could also tip it down so it's pointed to the horizon. Uh, the park position is where it points to zenith, and so that brings the feed points and the LNAs and all that down to the ground pretty low. I mean, if you were to go back to that picture, um, you would see that um, that it's kind of uh, belly button high off the ground. Uh, I mean, if I oh, okay. that this point right about here is about uh, uh, where my belly would be, <laughs> so okay. um, I could actually reach up to this. However, that being said, on some of the other sites, uh, we have this uh, separated by some greater distances, and so we are running um, some uh, pretty good coax. Uh, we're running heliax off of this thing, so we can separate these by about thirty meters from the um, actual antenna structure. Here, we're um, less than like. 10 meters or, or five meters. Um, so um, yeah, the maintenance on that uh, is not too bad. The big challenge for us was actually getting permission and access to be on the engineering building roof. It was the funniest thing. You see these yellow uh, um, kind of railings around us. Those were specifically put so that we don't fall off the roof, which we would never do in the first place. But anyway, yeah. Kind of funny. Well, maybe if you do the celebration uh, of the launch and uh, you with the beer up there, huh? that would who knows? So I think that's the rule there, right? For the yeah. students, huh? Right. Good. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks, Glenn. So we're Thank handing you. over from the opportunity. Thank you. Bye.